All right, hello there guys, this is Alan recording another comprehensive Magic the Gathering Arena draft video. I have yet to fire off a Corset 2021 draft on, to my channel. The set has been out for a couple of weeks already, so um, I'm already familiar with this set, and most of you um, are also quite familiar with the set. Also managed to hit, hit Mythic, but um, yeah, I didn't record any videos in the meantime due to the fact that I was, I'm too busy playing locally, which I do prefer Paper Magic over Digital, but Digital is definitely a nice way to learn and uh, practice. But anyways, yeah, let's fire off our first Corset 2021 draft. Uh, just to keep in mind, um, this is a very aggressive um, format. Um, in, in terms of depth, it's not really... Um, it's not very complex, like you can usually run away with the Jeskai colors and draft an aggro archetype and you can usually just steal games. Um, white is very strong in this set, as, as well as red. Um, the worst colors I think are black and green. I think I would rate black slightly higher than green due to the fact that they have excellent removal spells at common. But the problem with um, black and green is that most of their common threats um, um, take a little bit more work and they aren't as um, easy to cast and uh, um, basically um, garner advantage compared to white or red. Um, of course, green does have the Drowsing Tyrandon at 2 that can gain 4 power, but um, yeah, uh, green does have the worst removal, I think. But yeah, overall, this is a very... Um, I don't hate this set. Some people don't like it. They find it very boring, very straightforward, and it can definitely be that way if you end up drafting uh, one of Jeskai colors. But if you do end up drafting black, I think it, you would actually have a pretty fun time uh, doing this set. Um, but um, since it can be very controlling, grindy, and uh, you don't need to win the game uh, right away, and you can pull off some nice, cool combos and synergies. But overall, um, we could end up aggro, we could end up control. Let's uh, fire off a Corset 2021 draft video uh, for this channel. And games do tend to end fast in this set, so it's important to have lots of cheap removal and uh, early creatures to block or play or be aggressive with. Um, so far, I do like black in this set because it's very fun and controlling, but it is, again, not the best color. But I will end up drafting black if I think it's really fun or open. But we'll see. All right, course at 2021. Let's fire off our first pack one pick one. What do we open? Um, right, the thing is like, oh, okay, Mangara, pretty powerful mythic. Um, I don't think this is, um, eh, it's kind of a bomb if you can put counters onto it. Otherwise, it's just a really annoying creature that uh, disincentivizes the opponent from casting their second spells or attacking with two creatures. Definitely a high power level card and going to be my first pick. Um, yeah, this pack doesn't offer much. I think Kite Cell Freebooter is okay, but it's a little bit overrated. Since if it dies to a single removal spell, you can just get your removal spell back. Um, and a 1-2 isn't a good body um, for a 2-drop, um, since a 2-2 two -two can usually attack past it. And um, you don't really want to chump with this card or trade off for it. Um, so I guess it's a little bit of a hand disruption in the black control deck. It's alright, but I don't think it's great. Looking at the commons, I think Daybreak Charger is definitely a premier 2-drop in this set. Very nice card. 2-mana 3-1 is definitely quite um, scary in this format, but we'll take Mangara. Especially the fact that I can pump a flyer, and hopefully we end up drafting white. Um, looking at this pack, anything that plays well with our Mangara. Uh, we could take the Curion, Cur Curion Druid Dryad, um, and maybe end up in the white, green, plus one, plus one counters deck. Um, however, this card does run into a lot of issues. If you're heavy green, you're not going to get a counter onto this, but usually getting one or two counters can be pretty nice, and white green is a pretty uh, nice archetype. Otherwise, the best card in this pack, in case we want to stay open, might just be the Shipwreck Dowser. It's pretty good in blue, black control. Blue, red, it doesn't really fit well in blue, white, due to the fact that blue, white is looking to be more creature oriented. But for some reason, I don't know, some of the uh, pro players say that the Kyrion Druid um, Dryad isn't as amazing as it seems. So I might actually just tip my, dip my toes and take the Shipwreck Dowser here uh, as the best card. Another good, the best common in this pack is by far Spellgorge of Weird for the Blue-Red Spells deck, but I don't know. 
just because I pack one pick one the white card doesn't mean I have to force it. I don't think this is a bomb. I think it's a very good card though, so it will remain open. It could be the fact that blue red spells is open to our right hand side, so might as well just take the ship like Dowser and see where we end up. Okay, I guess there's a Dryad here. I guess there's a Feet of Resistance as well as a Rousing Reed, which is also quite excellent. Um, and then there is Spell Gorge Weird as a nice card for the Blue Red Spells deck. I think for now, I think we want to stick with both White and Blue. And uh, the question is, which one do we prefer out of these two? Um, they're both pretty good. Rousing Reed, especially in Blue White, due to the fact that. Um, it has a lot of creatures, but it doesn't really have any synergy with the Shipwreck Dowser. I think Shipwreck Dowser works best with Spellgorger Weird, while Mangara has some couple of options here between the Dryad, Feet of Resistance, and Rousing Reed. Um, and I've been quite impressed by the Feet of Resistance. Um, I think it's a pretty powerful combat trick, and it also gives you a plus one, plus one counter. We can always fetch it back from with the Shipwreck Dowser as well. Um, so I think Feet of Resistance, uh, even though... Uh, would be a conservative option and a pretty good card in this set as well. So we'll take feet. There's also Griffin Airy for the black white life gain deck, but that doesn't come together too often. And uh, easy swift response. Could also just take the shock in case if we end up in um, red. And uh, seeing this being passed might signal signal that red is open, but there's also swift response being passed to us. So that might. So maybe we just want to stick with white for now and see where we end up. Um, instead of deviating to another color. Um, yeah, I don't mind Swift Response, even though you are aggressive and in white and the opponent tends to um, keep up a bunch of blockers that aren't being tapped. It's pretty decent if you can fly, since the opponent will try to race you uh, on the ground. And uh, it keeps us in our color. Um, but by far the best um, card in this pack is by far the Shock. Um, but I think we want to just stick with white due to the fact that we have Mangara, which is quite a powerful card. And also Shipwreck Dowser can always get back our Swift Response, so... Yeah, some synergy. We could just end up in white blue flyers. Who knows? Keep ourselves in white for now, keep, so we can cut off. And that is definitely a late uh, Liliantas devotee as the best card in this pack. Um, Concordian Pegasus is fine, uh, best in white blue flyers, but I don't know if we're white blue yet. Um, seeing this late might signify that black is open, and maybe we can end up in some cool white black life gain deck. In that case, I guess we did take the Feet of Resistance over the Griffin Airy, but I think we're still fine with the Feet of Resistance since it's such a powerful card. None of the blue cards really stand out, um, so I'll take a Liliana's Devotee, showing the scene that's late my signal that black is open, and that is a late Selfless Savior. Quite an excellent card in the in white, especially if you need to, need to protect cards like Mangara or um, any expensive flyers um, that you might have to cast. And um, this can just give them indestructible. Big fan of the Selfless Savior. Otherwise, I think I would be looking at the Celestial Enforcer um, as a fine tapper if we end up in blue-white flyers. But Selfless Savior, showing that's light, might signify that white is more open than it seems. Um, nothing amazing. Could just take a short sword. Crypt Lurker can be fine, I guess. But it's really better in like Black-Red Sacrifice or Blue-Black Reanimator where you can sacrifice your creature and reanimate. I think the short sword is actually pretty solid in this set, due to the fact that it tends to be very aggressive and uh, just enhancing your creatures can be quite nice for two mana. Uh, now I could just take a Valorous Steed as a decent five drop. Why not? Uh, yeah, and it looks like we're going to be drafting white. I don't think I need a second Valorous Steed. I could also make the argument of taking the Mass Black Guard as an okay two drop. And we currently don't have any twos. If we do end up in Black White Life Gain, I do need to um, ensure that I have enough two drops. The Crib Lurker would also be fine, but it is a 4-drop, so I think we want to just lower a curve. I could also just consider the Lofty Denial as a fine card for the blue-white uh, Flyers deck. Didn't see a lot of blue, but Lofty Denial t tends to wheel anyways, and I don't really want to play more than 2 copy if I still end up in blue-white Flyers, so I'll speculate on a Mass Black card, and maybe we can end up in black-white Life Gain or even blue-white Flyers. Guess I'll take a Celestial Enforcer as a fine 3-drop. Sanguine Indulgence can also be fine in black-white Life Gain. Since it can get a nice discount, but we'll take a Celestial Enforcer. As a fine filler 3 drop we can use. Now maybe Teferi's Proje. Don't see it being too amazing in blue-white flyers, but better in like a more controlling archetype, but I'll take it. Um, maybe we'll take a Walking Corpse as a filler 2 drop. Who knows, don't think I need another Valorous Steed at 5. We can usually pick up those later. Um, so we know for sure we're going to be white. The question is, we don't know if we're going to be white-black or white-blue. Um, so, uh, we should, um, just put these aside, I think, 
and kind of uh, determine what color is open in the next pack so we can kind of uh, find a uh, out where we want to be but overall yeah i mean we have a potential to be anything didn't see too much amazing red cards either but didn't see too many amazing blue um in this pack the best cards is like shacklegeist uh basri solidarity lore scale quaddle warner woods is fine better in uh like a heavy green mid-range rampy deck not great in white green since you tend to be more aggressive and low to the ground and you're looking to abuse the plus one plus one counters um, so now, do I want Shacklegeist or Basri Solidarity? Don't mind a Solidarity. We do have a Valor Steed to go along with it. It keeps ourselves open with white. We could end up in white green, white black, white blue, and it's still a fine card. So don't mind it here. Shacklegeist would also will probably be my secondary choice in case we end up in blue white flyers, but again, we don't know that. So we'll keep ourselves open, take the Basri Solidarity as a nice way to um, improve our creatures. That's an Eliminate being passed versus the Gale Swooper. I hmm. uh, don't have my Gale Swooper yet, and I know for sure I'm committed to white, so I could just take it up now. But the Eliminate would probably be a good choice here as well, in case we end up in white-black. The only reason we would want to play white-black is because of Lilian's Devotee and the Eliminate. So I don't know how deep we want to go. Um, so maybe just taking the Gale Swooper can be fine. But this does signal maybe black is open to our um, left-hand side. I think I'll stay conservative for now and take the Gale Swooper. Also, late Death Loom Thaled being passed is a signal too. Um, okay. Don't think any of the white cards are good. There is a late Thrashing Bronodon, which I'm also a big fan of. Skeleton Archer is okay. Walking Corpse, we do have one already. Um, there's a Thrill for Discard. Riddle Form, it's not amazing in white-blue since you tend to be more creature-heavy and use better in blue-red spells. So I'll speculate on the Thrashing Brondon, and uh, we do have a nice step for a nice white-green deck with the Basri Solidarity. And that's a late uh, Pack Leader. Hmm. Pretty powerful card, even without dogs, it's still 2-2 that um, can't be, um, be dealt combat damage whenever it attacks. So uh, we can definitely maybe end up with a couple of Alpine Howlmasters, and that would be solid. Also late Bolt Town and Mistral Stinger, so uh, white red, white blue is also open. Just just sky colors seem pretty open, I think. But we'll take an easy pack leader here as a two drop. We know for sure that we want to play. Um, the Waker Waves is fine. That's a late Rain of Revelation, but in white blue you tend to be very aggressive, so I don't think you're looking to um, necessarily um, draw cards on turn four. Looking to mostly develop the board. This is more like a late game card. Could take the um, Revitalize in case we end up in white black. Or I can just take a Sure Strike and speculate on red maybe being open. Since I do like Sure Strike in the nice white aggressive deck. We don't even have that much life gain synergy. I think I'll just take the Sure Strike here and maybe speculate on red. Um, there's another Feet of Resistance. I could just take the Death Bloom Thalid at three. Um, usually I don't mind one or two copy of Feet of Resistance. Um, but it's still not a signal. I mean, Late Death Moon Thal might signify that black is actually the open color we're supposed to be in. But I could use another Feet of Resistance. I like having at least one or two copies of these, and they're quite powerful. I don't think I'll go for three copies, but two should be fine now. And that is a Late Grasp of Darkness. Okay, also Late Rousing Reed and the Makeshift Battalion. But yeah, I think we'll just be in this decent white-black aggro deck or life gain, I think. Given the fact that uh, we're giving, getting all these like, Late Grasp of Darkness... So I uh, might have missed out on like a couple of Death Loom Thalps, but that's okay. Hopefully we get reward next pack. Uh, Rousing Reed is also pretty strong. Makeshift Battalion would be a fine pick, but we'll take a Grasp of Darkness. And uh, that's a late Obsessive Stitcher. Hmm. think I could maybe just take a Concordian Pegasus as a fine 2-drop. Not too high on this. Better in white, blue flyers. Opt is also fine. This is a signal that maybe blue-black is open, but... I mean, I could also just take the Opt, to be honest. Um, we could end up in blue still, because the Concordian Pegasus isn't, isn't that amazing, but I guess that's synergy to let you enforce, so we'll just take it. Um, Legion Judgment, not really. I guess there's a Rise again, but we're not really looking to reanimate. This is more like a black-blue card. I guess I'll just take a random Legion's Judgment in case we need more removal. And, uh, well, yeah, blue-black definitely seems very open. I guess I'll take a Rise again. And maybe we can just go black-white life gain or something. That's also late skeleton archer. Yeah, I guess black is open from our left-hand side. And uh, we could just draft this black-white deck. 
without too much life gain synergy, and maybe we can just um, get across with our creatures. Seems like a solid option. Um, don't see too many amazing blue cards, no Roman Ghost Lights. Only saw the Rousing Reeds, but that's pretty much it. Um, there's no Capture Spheres being passed. So uh, yeah, it seems like maybe White Black is just the way to be. Didn't see any amazing red cards, no amazing green cards besides a late Thrashing Brondon. So I think maybe we just force White Black and say screw it. Seeing the late Grasp of Darkness being passed to us. And we can just be this heavy creature oriented um, White Black aggro deck. Which is always fine. Uh, there's another battery solidarity. Hmm, I do like myself a Gormond. Subera is really good, but again, we didn't see red um, last pack. I don't think we need double battery solidarity. I know the Chorister is also quite excellent uh, as a nice um, one drop that can pump itself. Um, but I think by far the best cards in this pack are like Subira and the Gormond. Um, given that we saw black late, I think we just take the Gormond here. Subira would actually play excellent in the red, blue, red, white um, aggro deck, and it would be my first pick overall. Um, but given the fact that again we didn't see a lot of red, I think we just take a Gormond. It can be a fine curve topper for this deck. Big fan of um, the Gormond. Now we can just take Anointed Forester. Oh, actually there was um, I think that was the best card yeah in the pack for us. I'll, I'll look over it again. I think I clicked a little bit too fast. Rambuxious Mutt is fine at five. Don't think we're milling the opponents. Um. Could just take a Sky Scanner as an OK filler 3 drop. We can sack to the Gormond. It also draws us a card, so it's pretty solid. We'll take a Sky Scanner. I forgot that pack where I clicked the Anointed Chorester. I don't know if there was another option, but uh, I definitely like having Anointed Chorester in this deck. Um, just to have a nice one drop that can gain some life. But yeah, it doesn't seem like the rest of the other colors are that open, so I think White Black is actually the place to be. Uh, given that we saw a lot of late black. But uh, yeah, our deck is coming along nicely. I guess there was a, um, a um, Palladium Mirror. A 3 that can maybe help to ramp into our Gormon. But we're not, again, a, really a ramp deck. We're just looking to uh, be aggressive. And we're just looking to maybe tempo the opponent out with the Grasp of Darkness. And our combat tricks and swift response. So I have to look over the video again. That's a late Alpine Howlmaster. Unfortunately, there's no dogs. I don't mind uh, myself and Angelic Ascension as like a slightly upgrade version of Feet of Resistance if we don't find enough playables. And uh, having a 4 4 Angel can be quite nice. We don't have made too many token generators besides like Liliana's Devotee and the Valor Steed, but it can be okay. That's a late to Liliana's Standard Bearer. Don't mind if I do. There's another Gale Swooper, um, which is also fine, but I think I don't mind just having a nice 3 drop that can uh, maybe uh, draw a bit of cards. Um, yeah, we'll take it here. It does fill a roll at 3 that we currently need to uh, fill the gap in. Now, I don't mind myself a Death Bloom Thou. We're not controlling that we want a Kite Cell Freebooter in this deck. I think the Death Bloom Thou is just a nice 3-drop we can use again. And uh, again, we could. I don't mind just trying to be very aggressive in this type of deck. In terms of Life Link Synergies, we only have the Mangara. So, I don't think I care about having the... Um, Sanguine Indulgence to fetch back our creatures since 4 mana is a lot. And we don't really have too many ways to trigger life gain. So I guess this is just going to be, again, our okay white-black beatdown deck. Um, here, I don't really want to play a Radiant Fountain. Maybe just take a Rune Halo. I could also decide against decide if I want a second Short Sword, to be honest. But I think this could just be our deck, to be honest. Or we can run 16 lands, as crazy as it sounds. And maybe we do end up playing Sanguine Indulgence. Uh, that's a late Swift Response. Okay. Um, so I don't mind maybe running two Swift Response and going 24 lands, since our curve looks kind of low. I mean, 16 lands. My bad. Um, yeah, none of these matter. I'm not looking to reanimate. I think I'll just take the uh, Archfiend's Vessel. But yeah, black was definitely open. White was slightly open. I think there was another white drafter in the table. I did see a late, um, what you what you call it, a uh, late, um, um, late gale swooper being passed to us. So definitely a signal that it's white was a bit open. Could take a actually I could actually play the rambunctious mud at five. I think it's actually quite solid. 
in this set. Could just cut the Sky Scanner maybe since we have enough threes. Or the Celestial Enforcer. We do have Concordian Pegasus and Gale Swooper and maybe Gormon that can fly. And also is a decent body that we can utilize. The Sky Scanner is something we can sacrifice, however. Um, we'll see what we make of this deck. I could cut a Feet of Resistance, maybe. Yeah, overall this deck is fine, nothing amazing, so... What's our situation looking like? 18 creatures, so I think we're going to 16 lands, given that we have a pretty low curve. Um, cards on the cutting block, maybe Sky Scanner, but it does play well with Gormond. Don't know if you want to cut a Swift Response, but it can be a fine removal spell if the opponent's trying to outrace us. Um, Solidarity seems fine in this deck since we have a lot of creatures and maybe we're looking to go wide. Short Sword can be okay. Angelic Extension can be a fine win condition in and of itself in case you need a 4 4 flyer. And also, also protects our creature. <coughs> oh, we do have double feet of resistance already, but I think it's still fine having it. Um, so I guess we just need one more cut, and uh, what will that be? Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think we need kind of our non-creature spell, so maybe we cut a creature. And in this case, maybe we can just cut another Walking Corpse, since I don't really value it too highly. Sky Scanner can at least draw itself, draw a card and replace itself, and it's still a flyer that has synergy with the Celestial Enforcer, or you can put a counter onto it with the uh, um, Basri Solidarity. So yeah, we'll try something like this. It seems like a fine deck. And uh, it seems like we're favoring white slightly more. Um, but do we really want to go um, to 7? Probably not. I mean, we do have, need double black for the Grasp of Darkness. I mean, I could go maybe 9-7. The only double black card is by far the Grasp of Darkness. And we can always pick up that later. Don't think we need to fire it off early. So, hmm. could risk it here and just go 9-7, uh, I think. And just go 16 lands and see how this deck runs. Um, since we will we'll be forced to cut another card and if we want to go 17 lands. But I don't think we want to do that due to the fact that um, our curve is quite low. And that uh, we don't have a lot of mana sinks. So yeah, we'll keep it 16 lands. Just keep it uh, Orzhov aggro. Pretty uh, weird uh, concept, but... I think that's fine, and then our picture, maybe the standard bearer, and uh, we'll see how this deck runs. So, yeah, red was definitely cut off this draft, same with blue. Didn't see again. Didn't see any capture spheres. Didn't see any roaming ghost lights. Saw one. Saw one shock in red, but that was enough to justify it. There was, a, I guess, a scorching dragon fire. Black was definitely open. Um, blue black was open, but again, the blue cards wasn't amazing. weren't amazing. White was slightly open as well, with the late feet of resistance and the gale swoopers being passed to us. But yeah. Um, I think we are. I think for sure black uh, was the open color to be open color to be in. So I don't know what I missed out on. Maybe I missed out on a revitalize for some life gain synergies. Might missed out on a grasp of darkness. Need to rewatch this draft to figure out what's going on. So we'll see. Alright, hmm, not a great hand. There's double black for Grasp of Darkness. We don't have any. Need to draw Black Swamp for a uh, Walking Corpse. So I think this is a mulligan and we're on a draw. Uh, slightly better. Still not amazing. What do I bottom though? This is hard. Maybe I just bomb the Feeder Resistance given the fact that I do have uh, another one in Angelic um, whatever. Um, and I do want Gormon as a late game win condition. So we'll keep it like this.
I could attack into it. He could have a swift response, but I'm fine baiting that out. At least he's not swift responsing one of our creatures. And we'll play Walking Corpse. No need to surprise with the Mass Blackguard yet. It's still early, so we can just um, kind of curve out here. Opponent's also playing White Black, but he's playing the Mardu colors, I guess. So I'm not sure what the opponent is playing, but this deck seems fine. I can grasp the darkness, but I don't mind just attacking the walking corpse, flash the mass blackguard, maybe ambush it. Opponent does what does want us to use a selfless savior. I think we'll offer to trade since this is too good, and then we'll flash the mass blackguard end of turn. I think selfless savior is too good for us to um, lose. Veto? Hmm, I could just kill Veto. Um, I guess I'll kill Veto now before um, he drains me for three. Yeah, I'll play the pack leader, get in there for two. Nice synergy we got going. Pitch burn devils, okay, that's a two for one. So I don't definitely I definitely don't want to attack into it. I guess I'll play out Mangara, why not? And maybe force the opponent to play one spell per turn. Or else I'll just end up drawing cards for him. Um, so if I do play out Gorman, what do I sack? Maybe the Mass Blackguard. But uh, Mangara does put a halt to his progress. If he's looking to sack and kill off the Selfless Savior, I don't mind just using Selfless Savior on our Mangara to give it indestructible in response. Okay. Okay, um, so this is going to die, and I guess I'm forced to sack the Selfless Savior unless I want to lose Mangara. So I could also sack Selfless Savior, give this indestructible, but I have to sack something else. So I'll lose everything anyway, so I guess I'll just give the pack leader indestructible. And then I'll sack the pack leader, I guess. Weird play, but I don't think it really matters. We'll just play out like this. Play our Death Boom Thalid. We'll say go. Fine taking five, and then I swing back for two. Pitch Burn Devils, okay. Guess I don't mind attacking my 3 2 into it. Yeah, I'll attack into it. Since my Mangar can hold off the 3 3. I guess he wants to deal 3 to my face, that's fine. I need to eventually get rid of this. And then once we get our next land, we can sacrifice the Sapperling. And um, that can be nice. And also, my Mangara can start gaining me life by getting in some nice, decent uh, lifelink hits in. So, nice, a uh, decent Mardu life gain deck from the opponent. Splashing white for some life gain synergies. So, he's definitely not going to um, sack anything here. He'll probably discard a card end of turn. We'll see what he does. But we're definitely taking a beating in the air, so we're probably forced to trade off if we top deck a land uh, for our Gourmand. I think we just do it now. Definitely sacking the 1 1 token. And I think I'm fine attacking with Mangara just to get in some lifelink damage in. Even though it doesn't play around swift response, I think it's okay. I'm fine trading here. Yeah, definitely going to trade here. He could have the reanimation effect, but I could take five, go down to four, swing back next turn, and then we'll still be fine. But hopefully he doesn't have rise again. I think I'll go for this. If he has rise again, then we're pretty much screwed, I think. Which he definitely should have in his deck. Yeah, he's looking at his graveyard. He has it. All right, definitely not in good shape. I guess maybe we just need a top deck of swift response to deal with the Cormond. Because now I'm forced to stack the Mass Blackguard. 
or he could have like a, I guess the um, the way the four mana bring back two creatures from the graveyard. Okay, interesting. Pitch burn devils. Um, he could have another rise again. Ooh, I guess that's nice. Just uh, giving us an, a decent card draw here. Um, yeah, I guess I'll attack with both and see what the opponent tries. Wondering why he didn't reanimate the um, Gormond here. I could also just give this a counter. Do I give it a counter? Hmm. Um, I think I do. So then if I do give protection to it, um, I guess he can't sack it. So yeah, we'll give it protection here. So nothing will die, essentially. And I still have a creature that I can pump as a, as a win condition. I'm wondering why he didn't re, uh, he didn't resurrect back his Gormond. I think that was a better play, to be honest. But now we can pump the uh, Mass Blackguard and get in for some damage. So, yep, let's get in there. And Poe might be forced to chump block this mass black guard unless he finds removal. Okay, yep. Even if 16 lands, our deck can end up flooding, so. Hmm, okay. Well, not an amazing hand. I guess we can play defense with the swift responses and uh, get to turn three for a Celestial Enforcer. We are on the play, so going down a land is pretty um, difficult. Going down a card is difficult. I'll risk it here. There's a chance this could end up decent or bad. But uh, we do have defense again in the early game in case the opponent tries to um, aggro us. And then on turn 3 and 4, we do have a, some decent plays. But for now, we'll just uh, hopefully top deck some lands in this weird 16 land deck. I guess the opponent is going to leverage card advantage instead. Okay. That's nice. Celestial Enforcer. Seems good. Okay. All right, land is good. I guess now I can just curve out. So don't mind if I do. And he's definitely not blocking this. He might just swing back. Next turn we can swift response and kill it. And maybe keep up Angelic Ascension if something was to happen to one of our creatures. I actually don't mind him using like a removal spell on the Celestial Enforcer. Since it's just an okay 3 drop. 
But with the flyer, I guess it does lock down his creatures, so... I guess we'll take a bit of a beating from the Mistral, Mistral Singer, and then hopefully um, we have access to Angelic Ascension next turn. Definitely not blocking. I think we uh, should be able to outrace him. And if I do block, he could pump again and uh, give it into put it up to 4 power and 4 toughness, which would be bad for me. Keen Glide Master, okay, don't mind if I do. Um, and yeah, I don't mind just um, using the Swift Response now since he's kind of tapped out. And uh, we'll attack with both. And if he tries something, we can uh, simply Angelic Ascension one of our creatures and turn it into an uh, angel. But we're definitely winning the race here, so don't hate it. But the opponent's definitely gaining a lot of card advantage, so the frantic inventory is definitely a very powerful strategy in this set. Our far emulator, okay, I can't wait until he actually tries to sack it and kill our flyer. He's all just angelic ascension in response. Um, could just do it right now. Or I can just flash into standard bearer end of turn. Which does pressure him a little bit. I don't get any card advantage, but I think it's fine doing it. And uh, if he wants to sack his Hardfire Emulator, so be it. Just want to put more body on to the battlefield, so... He's definitely going to try to chump and sack to get rid of my Gale Swooper. That's okay. Um, I can just, again, Angelic Ascension to make a 4-4 Angel in response, so... Um, let's do it now. Let's just attack. He's going to chump block and use it, but then we'll Angelic Ascension in response. And I just want to get in as much damage as much as possible here. We'll just use it now. And my question is, do I Swift Response to 2-1? Um, it's going to be pretty annoying, so yeah, I think I do. And I do have the Celestial Forcer as a decent tapper for next turn, so. The opponent does have a lot of cards, though, so he probably has a bunch of removal spells in his hand anyways. So we do need to kind of close out the game qui as quickly as possible. Probably has a turn to slag here for the Angel. Alright, used up its whole turn for it, so now we can get him down to 7. Uh, yep, this is fine. Sky Scanner can help us refuel, maybe. Anointed Courser looks great, and now we can get him for 5. Courser can pump itself next turn, and we do have the Celestial Courser as a fine tapper, if um, that's the case. So if I get in land next turn, I guess... Um, oh, I guess I can still tap a creature and still pump the Corister if I get a land next turn, so that would also be pretty decent. Yeah, but the opponent does have a, have a decent blue-red spells deck. Looks pretty strong. With cards like Hardfire Emulator, the Frantic Inventories, and the Mistral Singers as the standout cards. Well, Kent Geyser is fine, but it's really expensive. Something that you really want to play only if you have a lot of uh, lands in the late game. I guess he's going to get back to Volcanic Geyser and try to do something here. And uh, I guess I guess he can shoot down my Anointed Corister with the uh, Volcanic Geyser for one. Seems reasonable. I can tap down his 4-4 four, four and get in for four. Alright, that's okay. I guess if I get land, this is pretty strong. It's game over. I guess no land here, so... I mean, I guess I can't tap in anyways. So I could attack with all. He blocks here. I pump. Actually, I can just play out Selfless Savior. Never mind. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just attack with the 4-4 pump. And then if he blocks it, I'll use the Selfless Savior. I could just attack with all, though. But he's just going to block the 3-1. And uh, I guess I can get in for 6, down to 1. 
Um, he has three cards in hand. So should I just go for it? I could just go for it here. Since he's going to be down to one. Yeah, I think I go for it. And then I can get him down to one here, which is nice. And as long as he doesn't have two blockers, we should be in good shape. And we can just hit him once and essentially just win the game. So he does need a removal spell and maybe another blocker to get through. But um, other than that, one damage is enough. So, Alright, the opponent just passes. Nothing. I guess we do have Feet of Resistance, which I'm a big fan of. So we'll try to attack here and see what the opponent does. Don't think I'm pumping the Corister since he could have a removal spell. Frost Breath. Um, guess I don't mind the Feet of Resistance here. And I think it's fine using on the Anointed Chorister. Okay. Alright, managed to steal that one. Feet of Resistance, getting the job done. Pretty powerful combat trick along with Angelic Ascension, so... Right, Black Art can be flashing on two. Skeleton Archer, maybe can do something. This is not a land hand I like, but again, we're on the play. Don't really want to go down a card, and we have all our, all the mana in the world. So, hopefully, we can top deck something good later on. Um, otherwise, Flood would be an issue, but we'll try it. Leave of a Swamp in case we need Grasp of Darkness, I guess. We'll flash in the Mass Black Guard in the turn. Maybe we can attack and pump next turn if we have nothing to play. Hmm. Do I attack into it? I do have Skeleton Archer saved next turn. Um, so I guess I'm fine taking two. And next turn we can use Skeleton Archer to finish this off. Hopefully he doesn't play anything. If he does, I guess if he plays like a one mana creature or two mana creature, then and he, I guess if he leaves one generic open, then I'm gonna get punished here. But okay, I guess we're not punished. All right, let's uh, send in the archer. Don't know if I was was attacking the mass black guard first to bait out a removal spell. Maybe that was correct, I don't know. Maybe he would, he would have taken two anyways and just used a Scorching Dragonfire on the Skeleton Archer, but... This is fine, I guess. He definitely has something holding here. Scorching Dragonfire, okay. Guess he was going to use it anyway, so... <clears throat> I might have maybe sneaked in two damage for free, essentially, but... Still think we're in decent shape, and that's nice. A uh, Sky Scanner that we can sacrifice to Gormond. And then uh, we'll play out this Corister, attacking for three, sack the Sky Scanner next turn, and uh, get rid of. And hopefully, uh, this is the only creature on the battlefield. Gotta make sure that I attack with the Sky Scanner first, of course. I might not attack with the Anointed Corister because he could have a removal spell in response if I try anything here, so. Um, I guess we're fine just attacking with Skeleton Archer and Sky Scanner. I do have Feet of Resistance up too. 
So I think we'll try that instead of um, attacking the Corister. Let's see if he tries anything here. Pony is missing his land drops, so I'm glad he takes this. And the turn, I guess he could kill the Corister if I Gormon, but that's fine. Alright, he definitely has a trick. Soul Seer would be quite bad here since the Gorm since that's that would kill the Gormon, but that's an uncommon. But yeah, seems like a good turn for us. Guess I don't mind just developing the Gale Swooper. Um, how about what if there is um, I run into a Pestilent Haze? I guess we're still fine with that. I could also just pump the Anointed Corister, but again, he could be just handbag and removal. So I think we just um, develop the board here. And if there's a Pestilent Haze, that's fine. I think both the Skeleton Archer and the Gormon survives it. And I don't have to play the Walking Corpse. I can just keep up Feeder Resistance to dodge a removal spell here. Like this. Feeder Resistance is such an excellent common. The fact that it's 2 mana and it's instant speed is really powerful. Quite an overperformer in this set, to be honest. So, pick up those Feet of Resistance, don't undervalue them. I like having at least, again, one or two copies in the deck. Okay, I guess we have a turn one selfless savior into the pack leader and also rambunctious much so we have dog tribal in the Orzov Seems uh, quite fun And now the uh, selfless, selfless savior can protect our pack leader But opponent plays a tap land so yeah, we can get a nice hit here. So Nice synergy And then also our da dogs are when we attack with the dogs we prevent all combat damage to it so uh, we can definitely get some nice hits in. Corister, okay, that's fine. Did the opponent miss a land drop? Did he actually keep a one lander? Okay. Because keeping a one lander is very risky. We'll just get in there for three here. And all damage, combat damage will be prevented so he doesn't have any good blocks. Eventually, hopefully, we can swift response this anointed Chorister. I don't mind letting the Concording Pegasus dies if he has an answer to it. And this might signal that he has a Ranger's Guile in his hand, since he was holding priority with Freen. So, gotta be careful of my removal spells. Um,
Daybreak Charger. I guess I don't mind trading here. Yeah, I don't mind trading for the Anointed Chorister. It's going to be a pain in the butt later. Even though he is going to gain 3 life, he's going to gain 3 anyways. I don't really see the Concordian Pegasus doing much, except holding off the Chorister, which he can eventually pump into a 4 power creature, so... Right, I guess the opponent just stays back. We'll just play out our planes, move the attacks. Could just attack with all, but the Corsair does hold off the Anointed... The uh, Pegasus does hold off the Corsair quite well, so... We'll attack with these two. To get in as much damage as possible. Um, don't know why he's doing that. Our creature is indestructible. Combat damage is prevented. Um, so that was a pretty uh, strange block, but I guess that was a misplay, maybe. Yeah, I think that was a huge misplay from the opponent. Sure, I guess he just wants to cycle a Defiant Strike. I would trade it for this Anointed Chorister if I had to. Now I guess next turn he can pump the Chorister, but should still be okay. Ranger's Guile would suck. Um, I guess next turn we can Rambunctious Mutt and destroy it. But he probably knows about it already, so... Ah, uh, it's Rambunctious Mutt and destroy the dub. And it's targeting the dub, not the... Um, not the creature, so... I guess we, we baited it out. So, yeah, we'll destroy the dub anyways. And um, I guess he can still block and gain some life here, so... Um, I guess attacking doesn't matter, since... I guess they have Hexproof, not Indestructible, so it's fine just attacking with both of these. I guess I'm fine attacking the Concordian Pegasus too. So opponent definitely making a lot of huge misplays, giving Hexproof to a dub. I'm mean, to his creature when this only targeted dub, so... And then blocking with the uh, Daybreak Charger onto our Selfless Savior, even though it had combat damage prevented. So, uh, yep, definitely an easy game here. Even the opponent wasting a Ranger's Guile when we were targeting the dub. We're not targeting the creature. Okay, he has a second dub. Guess I don't mind just using Grasp of Darkness onto this, since there's no Feet of Resistance mana up or anything. Yeah, we'll just grasp it here. Seems fine. So yeah, just two for weighing the opponents, and this is lethal. Easy game. So four, four, and um, four and O. Oh. Um, I don't really think this is a four and O oh deck, to be honest. Um, I think it should be more like five and three, given that it's kind of lackluster, to be honest. But sometimes you just get lucky, and uh, yep, yeah, four and O. Oh. One more win, we can make back our gems plus two hundred, I think. Alright, Corus on 1, we just need a third land to hit our Sky Scanner and the Liliana's Devotee. I think we'll keep this and we're on the draw, so it's a high chance that we hit a land drop, I think. And we've been doing fine with 16 lands, so quite impressed with this deck overall, even though it doesn't seem that amazing, to be honest. Alright, so I can't attack into the Valdalian Arcanist, we'll just pass the turn. Next turn we could just play out the Sky Scanner. But we do have a turn 4 plays, so... Fine taking 1, there's no need to block a 1-3, we can just attack back. Or he has another follow-up here. I'm fine if he kills the Anointed Chorister. He could be thinking I might have Feeder Resistance up. Okay, Lyrie Larsenus. Hmm. Well, this can be quite a scary card if we don't deal with it, but I don't really want to grasp with Darkness it yet. So, um, yeah, I don't mind playing Liliana's Devotee to maybe hold it off. But if he has a removal spell, that would suck because he can start leveraging card advantage with the uh, Library Larsenist. And he probably does. Turret Ogre, okay. Um, could play out the Mangara. 
Mangara can be quite nice. Um, I could also keep up Grasp of Darkness and the uh, Angelic Ascension. What happens if I play Mangara? He could kill Mangara. And then he can attack, but I guess he won't be able to deal with the Liliana's Devotee. Or I could just Grasp of Darkness, the Turret Ogre, and activate the Liliana's Devotee. And that seems like a better play. Do I want to keep up Angelic Ascension? Probably not necessary for now, so we'll just Grasp here. And then end of turn, we'll just um, activate the Liliana's Devotee. For value. Strange Attack. Could be a Sure Strike. Let's say he has Sure Strike, so he'll have 4 power or First Strike. Um, so he will be able to kill both of these creatures. But then he wouldn't be able to kill the zombie. So I think we just triple block it here and hope for the best. Double Sure Strike would be punishing, but this is fine, I guess. Him just drawing a card, killing off our Anointed Chorister is okay. Don't know if I want to play out the Skeleton Archer. Stormwind Entity is definitely could be an issue. Um, I guess I don't mind playing the Skeleton Archer since it can... Um, it can actually attack past the 3-3, three, three, so I think we just attack with the 3-2 here. I could also just play Mangara, but again, it could just die, which I don't really want to happen. And I could keep up Angelic Ascension next turn to maybe protect it, so we'll play out the Skeleton Archer and ping the face, I think. I could have also attacked with the Liliana's Devotee, maybe, but he could have had a spell in his hand to give this prowess, so it gets out of range from the, um, from the uh, Skeleton Archer, so... This is definitely a very powerful card. Opponent could shock here, give this prowess an attack in for four, which I'm fine with as well. Could use an instant speed here to pump, but nope, no instant speed. So we can move the attacks, we'll have Angelic Ascension up, plus the Sky Scanner, perhaps Terror. Okay, Terror is definitely a bomb. Um so now what? I guess we can Sky Scanner. I guess we can Basri Solidarity here and attack in for 8. And hopefully he doesn't have anything. Secondly, I can just play out the Sky Scanner and potentially Angelic Ascension it and trade for the 5-4. That could also be quite reasonable. Or I can transform this to an angel, which I really don't want. Solidary doesn't seem bad, but it is kind of a nombo with the angelic ascension. But we get in for a nice 8 here, which is quite nice. And then if he plays a creature, I guess we can use the ascension to protect it. So we'll try it here. And 8 is a lot of damage, so I'm fine doing this. And when he tries to target with one of our creatures, we'll just use angelic ascension to save it and turn into a 4-4 angel. And that can hold off the terror to peak some force them to maybe block. But hopefully he doesn't have a lot of removal spells here, otherwise that can be a huge issue. Okay, Roman Ghost Lights. Sure, I guess that's going to bounce our token. And I guess that's going to deal 3 damage, I guess. We'll just Ascension in response. Next turn we can attack him for 8 and for some blocks. Selfless Savior looks excellent here. I guess I'll play that. And then I can also just attack here and make a zombie end of turn. If I attack with 3-4 he's just going to block here. I guess he's forced to maybe double block. We'll see. Right? Guess I don't mind just attacking, and I can make a zombie end of turn. Or I can just play on Mangara. Mangara's pretty good. This will prevent him from double spelling. So I think we'll try that. 
since if he double spells, I'll just end up drawing a card. So this will just force him to play maybe one creature. He might double spell anyways, but I still draw a card. So Mangara seems quite nice. So I guess if he has, he has three spells, he can just... Uh, this is... He can pump this three times and kill us, but... Opponent's definitely thinking hard here. But yeah, Terror to Peaks, if you can uh, if you can't deal with it early, then you just essentially this can just run away with the game, but we're definitely um, definitely the attack for eight seems solid. Don't mind here, I'm fine taking five. He's probably just gonna keep up a bunch of chub blockers. Which is okay. Does he have any flash creatures? I guess I don't mind playing the Sky Scanner first. And I don't think that we need double black anymore, given that we played our Grasp of Darkness, did we? Yes, we did. So now I just play out the Sky Scanner. I guess I'm fine attacking with all. Yeah, I guess we'll attack with all, and we do. Frost Breath. Okay. Didn't see that one coming? Hmm. That kind of sucks. Hmm. So I guess we're forced to maybe chump with the Sky Scanner. If I attack with a 2-4, he's just going to trade it. Um, could sack the Selfless Savior, but nah, I think we need to protect our creatures in case he has removal for the Sky Scanner. So I think we definitely need to keep the Selfless Savior back. And I can still take 5 from the Terror of the Peaks. Or chump it. see what he tries here. Do we protect the Sky Scanner? I guess he has lethal, so I think we do. But next turn, if, if we don't find anything, we can just die here. Well, I guess at least I draw a card, so it's not that bad. But I think we're dead, um, since we have nothing to attack with. But we can at least hold off the terror here. And uh, hopefully something comes up. Lillian on a standard bear, okay, not what we need. Yeah, I guess we're just dead. I guess if we chump here, we're just going to die. I could just attack the Sky Scanner and CB blocks. And then maybe Lillian on a standard bear can get me something here. Alright, we'll just let that happen. We'll just flash into Liliana, standard bear, and see what we draw. Pestle and Haze would be quite nice, but never mind, that's just GG. Home with the 1-2 punch there, but pretty close game. Got him down to 4 life, the Mangara was a bit of a nuisance. And uh, we did manage to um, make one of our creatures indestructible, so... Frost Breath took us down that game, but it is what it is. So, currently 4-1. and one. Let's try to get our 5 wins at least. Since we were very lucky in the first... Um, Four matches. All right, not an amazing hand. We just need white. Um, we are running 10 white sources. We have mass black art on two, but potential Lilian standard bearer. I think we risk it here because I don't really want to, again, go down on lands uh, cards, especially on the play. We can ambush the anointed Chorister, which I don't mind. Um, or I can just stay back, or I can just swift response it. 
It's not actually a bad idea, or I can trade off for it, which is also pretty decent. I guess I'll just, um, maybe swift response, but, nah, maybe I should trade off for it. This is a mass black art doesn't seem all that amazing anyways. So what does swift response do for me? I mean, it can be used on something bigger and scarier in the future. Mass black art is a decent creature to have, though. So yeah, we'll just, um, swift response here. It does prevent the two lifelinks, so that might matter. Um, okay. Brontodon is a card. Guess I'll just play out the Selfless Savior and pass, and then end of turn we can flash the Mass Blackguard. Truffle Snout, okay. Guess I'd take three here. I could double block this. Or tr but I double block would be a... I guess double block isn't bad. Yeah, sure, we'll double block it. If he has Ranger's Gals, this would suck. But... I could double block and just use the Selfless Savior, I think, to protect my creature. It depends. I guess if he does have the um, trick, then it's fine. But yeah, maybe if he has Ranger's Gals, then I think I'll use the uh, Selfless Savior. But this is okay. So we'll try this. And, um, yeah, I don't mind just playing out the Devotee, say go. And then we can take three from the, um, Truffle Snout. And so keep up the self Savior for defense against a removal spell. Alright, more, um, Truffle Snouts. So, maybe need a way to use Feet of Resistance to ambush them. Perhaps. Yeah, and probably no blocks here. Next turn, maybe we can go for block. I guess I could double block and use a Selfless Savior for the Truffle Snout. I guess we can try that next turn and flash in the Standard Bearer so we can draw some cards. So we'll take three here. And then we'll keep up the Instant Speed stuff for next turn so we can draw some cards by sacrificing Selfless Savior. So we'll just say go here. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for it. Um, guess I could just pump here, but I think it's better to draw cards, so... I guess we'll be losing two creatures and drawing two. That can be okay. I think we're fine trying it like this. And seeing what the opponent does. Alright, hmm. So, yeah, I think we have to grasp this in response. Or you could have Ranger's Guy, which could even be worse. Alright, that was, that was nice. Pretty solid two for one. Um, can now still stay back. Could pump the Mass Guard if he wants to attack, so. Um, guess we don't mind attacking here. I mean, I could double block and go for the the uh, standard bear, but I think that's a little bit too much. I think I'll just pump here in response. Or I can use feet. We'll pump. Yeah, I could have a trick here. That's okay. Yeah, okay, that's fine. He used up my whole entire turn. I'll be taking three next turn. He's almost empty-handed as well, so... I think we're still okay. The Lophosaur is kind of annoying. I guess it has Death Touch, so I can't really deal with it, but I can still give protection to our Lilian's Devotee next turn, and um, get rid of this Ornary Dilophosaur and take three. Alright, let's uh, do this. Hopefully we don't get punished. I could also trade off and get the uh, Standard Bear going. I highly doubt he has a second Ranger's Guile, but this is nice. Just two for wanting the opponent with this trick. Now Death Bloom Thout seems fine, and I don't mind trading that off, so we'll attack for three here. I think I two for one the opponent with the Invigorating Surge and now the Ranger's Guile, so 
and also the Satessin training, so definitely doing a lot of good work. This game, um, yes, I don't mind just attacking with the Death Room Thalad here, keeping the Liliana's Devotee as a blocker without the Concordian Pegasus. Tyrandon, I guess um, we can maybe offer to trade with the Death Bloom Thaud, which I don't mind. Um, could just play out, just run out to Steed maybe. Could also attack the Concordian Pegasus, so a little bit of a misplay there. So yeah, we have a nice ground army. Next turn we can attack with both. If he trades them off, we can um, essentially just um, just Liliana Standard Bear draw two cards. I guess I don't mind like. Triple blocking this, maybe. Or I can just cast a Rambunctious Mutt here. Kill off the Satessin training. I think we'll do that. So it doesn't. So it's only four power and we can attack in for one. I think. Yeah, I guess I don't mind attacking Vol since I, even if I lose a creature, I can still draw some cards and. Um, Essentially use a standard bear here. I don't know. Maybe I missed a window to attack since last turn. Maybe I could have drawn some, drawn, drawn some cards and still um, still made some zombies. So I think we're just fine doing this. Just keeping this board stall going, attacking him with the flyer. But definitely should have attacked last turn. I think. Don't think I care about the fine strike. I'm fine pumping my Corsair and blocking this. Play out Lances, I might have to pump the Chorster and also um, play out the Liliana Standard Bearer, but we're def we're slowly getting there, but um, we still have a long way to go. Mentor is kind of scary. He does gain life if I kill it, so it might not be reasonable to trade for it. Angelic Ascension, we can use end of turn, maybe use it on a token. Don't mind if I do. We'll just use it on a token and uh, generate another flyer, maybe the 2-2. And then um, maybe we can put them on a faster clock. Yeah, let's do it now. We'll transform the 2-2 token into the flyer. And uh, the only instant speed is, I guess, Swift Response. Don't think there's anything green that I need to be careful of. So this seems fine. Keep playing out the lands, and we'll move to attacks. Again, for five, maybe force the opponent into an all-out attack next turn. Opponent also doesn't have any reach creatures, so... Yeah, we're definitely getting there. Alright, I don't mind just triple blocking this maybe. Um, yeah, I guess I don't mind double block. He could have a sure strike. And if that's the case, that's only going to that's not gonna deal enough, so I think we just block double block like this, I think. I guess there's no there's an invigorating surge he can use. Okay. I think that's still fine. Ooh, actually that's not good. Yeah, I guess I'm forced to uh, use the standard bear now just to um, draw some cards end of turn, so we'll just do that. Huge misplay there. Um, can't believe that had a counter on it, so we'll just say go. Feet of resistance can maybe pre um, prevent damage from happening, so I think this turn we'll just play land. Um, guess we don't mind sacrificing the death bloom thalid. Um, using Feet of Resistance. Yeah, we'll just attack in for, I think, five. We can use Feet of Resistance to prevent damage from happening. I can use the Goreman and force him to sack. He might sacrifice a Conclave Mentor, which is a problem. Um, let's just cast a Gormond. 
He might sack the Conclave Mentor, but we do have lethal. I do have 9 power, 9, 10, 10 power coming in. So I guess, I guess it's still not over yet. So I don't think I want to pay this. I think I want to keep a feeder resistance to prevent the damage from happening. Um, so he doesn't gain life. So I, I'm, I think I'm going to decline here as weird as it seems. So we'll decline and we'll just uh, use feeder resistance to prevent the life gain from happening and just win the air. Okay, never mind. I forgot the Conclave Mentor gave the Invigorating Surge the plus one plus one, the extra plus one plus one counter, so definitely a huge misplay there. Um, but I did draw two cards off of that, so I'm not going to complain. So currently five and one, hopefully we can get to seven wins. This seems, it seems possible to hit seven, but again, this deck isn't too exciting, it's fine, but I'm surprised that I even got to five, to be honest, since I haven't been having too much luck with these okay aggro decks. Made back our gems, so I'm quite happy. We can fire off more Premier uh, M20 one drafts now. If I can get to six wins, I'm six wins. I'm going to be quite happy with this deck as well. But seven wins, I really can't believe this deck is might even get to seven, since I think it's very okay and mediocre. No crazy bombs or anything, just a decent curve with decent removal and um, protection spells. All right, selfless savior on one. Uh, we're on the play. I think we have to keep it. A single black gives us access to Death Thal. We're running 9-7. Well, this could be a disaster. This might not be a disaster. Let's risk it. This can be very good if we can get our Swamp on turn 3. And maybe the Basri's uh, Solidarity can be quite useful. If we, or if we uh, pick up a nice 2-drop. But, yeah... Right, next turn would uh, decide our fate, I think. Whether or not this deck manages to get there. Right, that's a scary card. Guess I'll just stay back. And yeah, definitely a scary card here. So I think I'll swift response at ASAP. If he decides to attack, and I hope he attacks. Uh, I could just take it here in case he has Ranger's Guile. Or Defeat of Resistance. So I think I'll take two and then uh, see what he does end of turn. Alright, so now I can kill it. Because he could have Feet of Resistance up and this gaining 4 counters would be quite scary. Alright, this sucks. Do I actually Basri Solidarity in trade here? Seems pretty bad, we'll just pass. Yeah, this hand shouldn't have been a keep, I think. Um, a single Swamp would give me access to Death and Thal, which can hold off this 3-2, but now we're just forced to take a beating. With the opponent with both of his colors open, so... Took the risk, didn't get rewarded. Unfortunate. I could use Feet of Resistance, I guess, and hold off for a turn. Doesn't seem great, but I think I might have to just to prevent some damage from happening. But yeah, this is not looking good. This is looking quite awful. Yeah, I think we have to, as sad as it seems. It's a pretty sad play, but I think we have to go for it. Alright, black mana finally, and what do I want to play here? I guess a Death and Thal isn't bad. Um, but he will still attack with a 2-3. I can play out the Skeleton Archer to be mana efficient. Um, and I guess I can maybe... It also holds off the 2-3. I can sack the Selfless Savior to um, block off the Makeshift Battalion. Yeah, we'll just do that instead. Just be mana efficient here since we could turn 3 Death Loom Thal into um, Basri Solidarity. And then we'll sack our Selfless Savior to trade for this Makeshift Battalion. I think he'll attack with all anyways here. Yeah, I think he's just doing this for um, the counters. 
So what we can do here is we can uh, move the blocks, block here, block here, sack the uh, selfless savior, and hopefully it, it, it works out. I guess I don't mind just giving this indestructible. It just it does prevent the damage from happening, so it's not bad. Okay. I guess now we can Deathloom Thalad and the Solidarity to maybe trade off. Hmm. Or I could Grasp of Darkness to 5-4, and then he won't have another creature. We'll just do it now, I think, since he might draw a Feet of Resistance. And now I can trade off for the 4-3, which I don't mind. Or I can block off the 2-3, but I'm happy trading off the 4-3. Just don't want this growing counters over and over, or else we're going to be in big trouble. Do I actually want to use Basri's Acolyte Solidarity on the um, Death Loom Thal? I don't think so. But uh, yeah, we're getting, getting in nice trades. We might actually run away with this game, as crazy as it seems. Due to the fact that the opponent is flooding. And we managed to deal with some of his threats. Yeah, the opponent's definitely flooding, so... Um, yeah, I don't mind just the Concordian Pegasus here. And I think we don't mind the Solidarity. Do I attack? He can gain two. Don't mind attacking here. He can gain two, but um, this is a lot of damage. Yeah, opponent's flooding out quite badly here. I can play the Gormon here. I could just attack first and play Gormon. I think I'll do that instead. And I uh, will sack the Death Loom Thal now, even though it is a 4-3. I do want to put a fire, Flyer into play and then get rid of his Acolyte as well, so... Alright, I guess we stole another game since the opponent's dying to Flood. That's uh, quite interesting. Doesn't usually happen. Gale Super can doesn't really do anything here. So I guess I'll just attack with all three of these and maybe he's forced to chump. Five, I guess I can attack with a 1-1 one, one, since even if he blocks it is lethal, so. Pretty much game over. Alright, sweet, 6-1. and one. Um, Yeah, I'm surprised this deck even managed to get 6 wins. This usually, again, never happens. Um, and usually in white, you want to be white-green, white-red, and uh, or white-blue aggro. Not white-black, which white-black is mostly trying to leverage the uh, life gain synergies. But uh, yeah, we drafted a pretty decent aggro deck. 9-7 turned out pretty well, even with 16 lands. Um, it turned out nicely. We do have, even with 1-6 drop, 2-5 drops, and 3-4 drops, 16 lands worked out pretty well. We have double feeder resistance. Um, and uh, Angelic Ascension adds excellent overperformers, since they're cheap uh, protection spells that we can use at instant speed whenever our creature attacks. Um, Solidarity is fine. I think it's better in green-white, but it's still solid due to the fact that we're running a lot of creatures. And uh, pumping, giving our creatures plus one, plus one counters can be huge. Um, swift response, excellent. Removal, in case the opponent's trying to outrace us. And the Grasp of Darkness, also great. Um, yeah, uh, seems like a solid deck. The uh, pack leader and the self savior has synergized a bit in this game. There was one game where the Rambunctious Mutt was on the same battlefield with the pack leader as well. Um, so yeah, quite a decent deck. Um, I almost forgot the short sword was, um, into this, on the sideboards. I could tech it in right now, but the question is, what do I cut? Um, I, the Sky Scanner has been pretty helpful as Sacrifice Fodder for the Gourmand. And I think Basri Solidarity might actually be better than short sword, due to the fact that I can give all my creatures plus one, plus one. So, uh, yeah, um, pretty nice deck. Managed to overperform. Let's get our final boss, shall we? I could also consider cutting a Feet of Resistance for a Short Sword. Don't know if it's worth it, since Feet of Resistance is so good. I guess Feet of Resistance is also like a protection spell and a Short Sword, since you also get a plus one, plus one counter, so maybe Short Sword isn't worth it. But I can see it being played in this set. Alright, pretty bad hand. We're on a draw. Hmm. I guess Walking Corpse and Liliana's Devotee can be quite nice. And we just need a single white to have access to the Gale Swooper and Feeder Resistance, so maybe we risk it. We also get an extra draw step. And we are running 9-7. Let's risk it here. I think it's worth taking. Pulling with his own short sword, okay. 
And now we got our white mana, so quite happy about that. We can leave the walking corpse and the Liliana's Devotee can make it into a 3-2. Alright. Guess now the Alpine Watchdog is going to be a 3-3. Uh, three, three. And we'll take uh, a, bit of a bit of a beating from it first. I can always just offer to trade, like play out the Liliana's Devotee and then try to hold off the Alpine Watchdog next turn. Since he could have Swift Response up. Field Resistance would suck too, but um, I guess he doesn't. Alright, we'll just play out the Liliana's Devotee here. And then uh, let's keep the two, 2 back to trade off for the 3-3. Three, three. The 2-3 can hold off the 2-2, two, two, so... We should be fine once we get to turn 5. We can use a Rambunctious Mutt to destroy the Short Sword. But I don't mind this trade here. Um, since uh, these both two cards naturally trade anyways. Next turn I can also play out the Gale Swooper. Do I block? Yeah, I think I block here. If I double block, he could have Sure Strike and that can punish me. So I think we just throw the Walking Corpse in front of it and see what happens. And the trade happens, so not bad. Two cards are naturally supposed to trade, so I don't feel bad that um I traded with a Short Sword. Opponent doesn't keep up Short Sword. I mean, he could have like an Angelic Ascension here. Um, I could just develop the um, Gale Swooper. I don't know. Is the Gale Swooper worth it? I mean, it's pretty weird keeping up these two mana open. He's definitely going to pump the Chandra's Magma. He could have Angelic Ascension end of turn. So I think we just pass here and not do anything. Since this is pretty weird. Not keeping up two mana is pretty strange. And we have Feet of Resistance up as well as Angelic Ascension. In case the opponent tries something here. Could have also, could have also Swift Response to Chandra's Magma, but I'm not really scared of taking five. Huh. I think I don't mind using the Feet of Resistance. And I guess if he tr tries to respond, I can also still use Angelic Ascension. Alternatively, I can use Angelic Ascension on the Lilian's Devotee. Um... But then if he responds, then I'll use the Feet of Resistance, but this will end up getting exiled anyway. So I think the Feet of Resistance is the right choice. So we'll just try to pull it off with the Feet of Resistance here. And put a counter onto this, which is quite nice. And if he tries something, again, I can Angelic Ascension and hold off this 3-3 and make a 4-4 Flyer. So lots of options here. Also have a swift response to answer to Chandra's Magma next turn. Is he going to try something here? I mean, with Desiree Protection from White, so the 3-3 is definitely dying here. And then I can save this Angelic Ascension for something better. Sure, I guess he has his own, so I, I'm kind of happy that um, I kept up the swift response. So hopefully he doesn't have his own feet of resistance here. I could also enjoy Ascension my own Liliana's Devotee, but I think that's a waste. I, I rather enhance a better creature. And hopefully he doesn't have a feet of resistance since I plan on using the swift response on the 4-4 Angel, so... We'll just say go for now. Um, could keep land in hand. I think we'll keep land in hand to surprise the opponent. And if he doesn't attack, I'll just Rambunctious Mutt and deal the Short Sword next turn. But opponent's probably going to play around the Swift Response. And might not attack. In that case, I'll just play off the Rambunctious Mutt and kill the Short Sword. And I give him an extra turn to activate the uh, Magmut. But he's playing into it, which I'm quite happy with. Alright, hopefully there's no Feet of Resistance. Seems like it might have it. Might be his final card in hand, but okay. That's quite nice. This will force him to equip the Short Sword. We can destroy it with the Rambunctious Mutt and get in a decent attack for three. I could also just attack first in case he has the um, Swift Response and we can Angelic Ascension in response instead. 
I think we'll attack first and see what happens, and then next turn we can destroy the uh, Chandra's Magmut. Punk could be sandbagging it here. We never know, but I'll definitely cast a Rambunctious Mutt and destroy the sword now before it causes any more problems. And now this Rambunctious Mutt can hold off this 2-2. And then we can start attacking in there. So yeah, this card's a bit of a sleeper. Um, I've been quite impressed by it overall. Just a decent 5 drop with a decent body. Now this can also hold off the 3-2. Um, I can attack here. He can double block and kill off my Liliana's Devotee. He can also just kill off my Magmut, which I don't mind. Or I can just play the Gale Swooper. Yeah, maybe Gale Swooper is okay. And I guess I don't mind... I guess I don't mind attacking with both Rambunctious Mutt and Liliana's Devotee. And uh, if the Rambunctious Mutt ends up dying... Then um, I guess we can still make a zombie end of turn. Which I'm fine with, and he's forced to lose a card. I'm fine taking three, and then uh, taking one from the Chandra's Magma, to be honest. Since we're kind of outracing him, do I want to play the Concordian Pegasus? Probably not, I'll just keep up the Angelic Ascension. Put could top deck a removal spell any time, and be a, quite a nuisance. Could also force a block with the... Season Hollow Blade. Do I do it? And then in response, I can Angelic Ascension to make a 4-4. Four, four. I can just take 3 for now. Yeah, no blocks. I think we're fine. And I think we should be able to outrace the opponent if we're keen enough. Feet of Resistance. Okay, I think we just attack. We can leave up the Concordian Pegasus to maybe block and use Feet of Resistance next turn to uh, force him to um, discard a card. So I guess the MVP really is Feet of Resistance, um, so that, that that should have maybe been my um, front cover page, but yeah, let's get in there for um, a huge chunk of damage, opponent's down to 2, we'll play the Concordian Pegasus, keep up Feet of Resistance, block up the 3-1, and then um, force him to discard a card, and if he has removal in response, we still have Angelic Ascension up, so I think we're going to steal this game. Play Feet here or Angelic Ascension? I think we Angelic Ascension here. Um, let's think. Hmm. I guess the Angelic Ascension works better than Concordian Pegasus. Alright, nice. Yeah, it's Feet of Resistance, Angelic Ascension stealing the game. Got a nice 7 wins out of this draft. Even with a mediocre deck, those two protection spells, those three protection spells, um, managed to steal a lot of wins. Just dodging those efficient removal spells and, um, yeah, getting the job done. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, claim the prize. Take a snapshot as a thumbnail. I guess I need to take a snapshot of the deck as well, but, yeah, quite impressed that this deck even managed to make it to 7. Usually decks like this, again, don't usually make it to 7 um, due to the fact that it doesn't really have any amazing bombs. Uh, the four drops are fine, Gale Swooper and the Mangar, not even a single Basri's Acolyte as well. Um, not many synergy in black-white, no life gain synergies. Just a decent curve of creatures, Gormond, and then these Feet of Resistances and Angelic Ascension uh, doing the heavy lifting. So, um, yeah, let's put maybe... Nah, I think it's too late. Let's uh, take a snapshot. Hit the done. And then now we can uh, collect our prize. And then uh, let's pretend we are doing a draft. Of course, at 2021 with uh, an arena pack that we just opened. So pack one, pick one. Of course, at 2021, let's pretend this is a draft. Um, yeah, Solemn Simulacrum seems pretty good. Nice creature that can help you ramp, thin out your deck, draw a card when it dies. 
pretty solid card deck that's playable in any deck, um, but Falconer's Adept is also quite strong. If I was running a white aggro deck, I think I would take Falconer's Adept, but I think as a pack one pick one, I would take the Solemn Simulacrum just to stay open, and it's pretty good in every deck, since it has some card draw synergies, some fixing synerg um, it allows you to fix and splash, and it also um, allows you to ramp, so pretty solid card. Um, I think in this pack, I would take the Malefic Scythe. Um, although, Selfless Savior is pretty good, as we saw from the last game. And Primal Might is a, it's a good uh, removal spell. But, um, yeah, fight spells do run into the problem. Especially the fact that they're sorcery speed. And um, But uh, Primal Might is actually quite efficient. It's a decent one for one. But usually in green, you have cards like Hunter's Edge that tend to get the job done anyways. Um, since... Um, um, it can deal damage without getting into a fight, but getting into a fight can be an issue if the opponent, um, for example, has instant speed removal. But I guess I can say the same with the Hunter's Edge. So I think Hunter's Edge and Primal Might are actually close cards. Primal Edge might have a slight upside to the fact that if you have a giant creature with Trample, this can get pretty powerful in the late game since you can trample over. For a ton, but other than that, it's similar to Hunter's Edge. Uh, just a fine removal spell, nothing else. I think in this pack, I think I would take the Malefic Scythe as a card that has um, has more long-term long value um, compared to cards like the Primal Might. Just um, there's a lot of sacrifice going on in black, and then uh, this can definitely grow. Um, once your creature dies, this array gains two counters, so once you equip it onto a creature, it becomes a pretty um, difficult creature to attack or block. You can attack a with a creature and then maybe the opponent's forced to trade off for it and then this will grow and then you can re-equip this to another creature and uh, it's quite cheap so I think I would take the Malefic Scythe over two of these um, and then my second choice yeah probably the Primal Might or Selfless Savior both are close and uh, Gale Super has also been an excellent common in the set um easy season hollow blade this is the mythic uncommon of the set don't sleep on it um yeah, just put a counter onto this, put on a Satessan Training, put any permanent uh, ways to increase the stat, stat line, and uh, this card can definitely uh, run away with the game. Uh, especially great on turn 2. Um, there are some specific answers, but those specific answers um, in this set are kind of uh, rare. Um, like, I guess you can use enchantment-based removal, maybe you can exile this with the secure the scene or use um, soul seer on it but it still requires a very specific answer and it's pretty difficult to attack past and um, I mean it's a difficult creature to block and attack into but uh, definitely a very strong card uh, probably the best uncommon in the set I think Alright, eh, not an amazing pack. Spore Web Weaver is fine. I still think I'd take it here. I mean, it's not amazing unless you can put 1-1 counters onto it. The moment you can put 1-1 counters onto this, this can be a very effective blocker that's hard to attack pass. And then it actually um, it actually punishes the opponent by giving you an extra 1-1 green sapperling creature tokens and gaining a little bit of life. The Hexproof from Blue is also pretty solid, but I haven't been too amazed by this card. Like, it might be slightly better than Mistral Singer depending on what type of deck you're playing. Uh, I think this plays more in like a um, green mid-range deck where it can play defense in the early game. So something like green-blue, green, blue, green um, and green-black favors this card. Not amazing in green-red. I guess green-white is also solid if you can put a plus one, plus one counter onto this and this card can usually get out of hand. But as long as maybe you can put one or two counters and this can start attacking, it can become a serious threat, so... Yeah, Spore Web Weaver, why not? Eh, Animal Sanctuary is fine. Uh, definitely something that excels in a white deck. There's a, a pretty decent number of um, birds in this set. Um, pretty decent number of cats and uh, dogs. Goat, ox, and snake, not so much. Uh, you have a lot of dogs in white, like the Alpine Watchdog. White, red to be more specific. And cats mostly are in green, but there's also, I guess, the Basri's Acolyte on four, uh, which is also cat. And then uh, for bird, you have, I guess you have Avon Gaggle Master. Um, and I forgot what other birds there are in the sets. Maybe the Falconer Adept tokens. But yeah, it's a fine card. Thrashing Brondon is also pretty good. 
as a nice blocker and a way to just destroy a target artifact or enchantment for one colorless. Um, so, yeah, between these two, it's kind of close. Maybe just experiment on the land. Um, but, yeah, since um, if you run out playables in your draft, you could always um, always use a land as an upgrade um, to fill a card slot. So, yeah, don't mind an Animal Sanctuary, but overall, um, that pack wasn't too impressive. Looking at this pack, yeah, Angelic Ascension, as we saw from the last game, is pretty powerful. Uh, it's pretty much an enhanced version of Feeder Resistance, but Feeder Resistance is still very good and very close. The fact that this can give a generate a 4-4 Flying Angel, dodge a removal spell, um, and become a series threat is better than Feeder Resistance, I think. Feeder Resistance can give you a plus one, plus one counter, but the creature can still easily get blanked, while generating a 4-4 Angel might require a very specific answer. Luckily, the, the creature doesn't have Vigilance, so it can still die to Swift Response, as we saw from the other games. Also, Anointed Chorister, pretty nice uh, one-drop in the white deck. Also, a great card in the set. And uh, final pack, ooh, pretty interesting. Um, I think it's between the two commons here, Scorching Dragonfire, Grasp of Darkness. I think I would take the, both the removal spell over Feeder Resistance first. Twinblade Assassins is also pretty excellent, but uh, Green-Black isn't a very good color combination unless you have a lot of removal. It tends to be a little bit slow, grindy, and mid-rangey, but I'm not going to take a gold card um, that isn't broken as a pack one, pick one. It's a good card, though, and I would be happy to splash this or play this in black-green. I think it's between Grasp of Darkness and Scorching Dragonfire, and I might just lean Scorching Dragonfire since it's easier to cast. Um, red is a better color than black in this set. Doesn't require double black, and it also exiles. But uh, Grasp of Darkness would be a close follow-up, so... Alright, there you have it. Our first 7 win video on this YouTube channel for Corset 2021. Probably going to fire off another draft later, and uh, some of you can uh, maybe enjoy watching this. And um, until... Then have a wonderful day guys and take care.